Hey, welcome back. September the 21st, Monday Morning Briefing, episode number 47. So this week's episode is uh, recorded on Tuesday, just like we did last week because we got in here yesterday and just had to do our our monthly bookkeeping stuff. Uh, we had to do sales tax. We got to pay the state. We got to do the sales tax stuff and payroll tax and, and get things kind of lined out in the office. So we were doing that and then we had a bunch of stuff to ship. We restocked the belt premium kits last week on the website both the blemish and the premium packs. And so I want to thank everybody that, that took part of that. A lot of people bought those. We sold out of the blemish. I didn't have quite as many blemish this time as I did the last time. Um, in fact, we didn't have the number of belt kits that I usually get out of a shipment only because we didn't have the liner material that we need. Um, I don't know what happened, but we um, I usually get, uh, I think, 15 sides of three, four ounce is what we normally get with our with our order and this time we got five so something got messed up there in translation either i've screwed up and, and ordered the wrong stuff or something but we ended up with a bunch of 910 but not enough three four so i cut what i could um, i had a few sides of three four left um, like one or two i've still got a little bit but i've got to save some back for our projects as well and so we're going to go ahead and place another order with herman oak hopefully get caught up on that and uh, get some three four in here so that we can finish out what we've got for the the belt premium kits um or or both the blemish and the premiums so there's still uh, a few premium kits on the website i'm not sure how many i know we sold quite a few but there is some there um left and then like i said as soon as we get the three four we'll uh get back to cutting and get those refilled and uh, i'm not sure how many blemish we'll have like i said i just i call the blemishes out as we're cutting them and then throw them on there this last set of blemishes there's some that have some pretty good marks in them and stuff so just be aware of that but that's that's what they're they're uh, graded as so that's what we we call them for a reason because they are going to have marks in them and stuff that you can probably work around depending on the size of the belt that you're building as well as the type of tooling so um, something else too we also restocked the saddle soap bars um, i just keep them in here like i said because i use them for various things in the shop but if you have been wanting some of these for me, I get them from Weaver, so you could definitely order them from them. You can pick these up at any feed store. Almost every feed store I've ever been in carries glycerin saddle soap bars, um, and a lot of them also carry the cans of saddle soap. But if you're looking for these and uh, you've been wanting to get them from us, we do have them. They're back on the website. We're also chopping up a bunch of sheepskin scraps so that we can get the uh, sheepskin packs on there uh, so if you've been needing some of those so we'll try to get those on the website this week as well um, as far as what i'm doing this week i got in uh, yesterday afternoon i pretty much killed most of the day in the office and helping claudia package so once i actually got in the shop i kind of got a couple saddles going that um and oiled and conditioned that we had washed this weekend we've been trying to get caught up on some of the repair i don't do a ton of repair anymore but i do have some that come in for uh, old customers and, and and locals and stuff that we'll take occasionally and so I've got four of them that need to be washed. I washed two of them this weekend. We got those conditioned on the rack. I'll show you those in just a second. And then I've got a couple more that are about ready to be washed. But then after that, after I got those conditioned, we just like to let those set and kind of soak up that oil and skid mores and kind of, you know, just mellow out a little bit. I went ahead and started cutting our parts for this week for all of our custom stuff. So now that we're back in uh, the swing of things, getting ready for Christmas, I want to stay as organized as possible so that as we come into the Christmas rush, uh, things aren't just piling up from the summer that I should have had done or new orders that are coming in that are just normal orders. So we try to keep those moving out and that way we can kind of try to stay ahead of ourselves coming into the Christmas season and that way you leave more windows of opportunity open to uh, to do some of those jobs as you get kind of closer to Christmas, depending on when you're going to close your books. Um, historically, we've closed our books around Halloween. I don't know what we'll do this year. We'll just have to kind of see. I'm kind of focusing on saddles for the rest of the year, try to get those caught up, and that way we can get a few out of here because I'm really far off of where I want to be this year, um, just a culmination of the year. I, I, I can't really pinpoint exactly where I where I got behind, but it's just a lot of things. Just just a lot of things going on, and this year's been crazy, like everybody, everybody knows. So anyway, we're going to try to focus on those coming into Christmas, but I am going to take Christmas orders. I just don't know how many, and um, I just kind of take them as they come if it's something – really complicated or, or really something that's out of my wheelhouse that i don't normally build i usually will turn that down for christmas i usually turn those kind of things down all during the year as well but when it comes to christmas time i try to stick with things that i'm proficient at that i can make um, fairly quickly and that I'm, I'm good at like i have a history doing uh, belts and wallets and things like that 
we'll take orders on those because those are those are what we build. Um, and uh, and we've all, we've had a couple people call asking about rope bags. Usually, if I take a rope bag, it's usually one or two. But I've had three or four people call on uh, rope bags for Christmas. It sounds like, um, and so we'll just kind of see if those people follow through. Usually, whenever we give them the price of those, you know, most people won't won't go through on that just because it is a lot bigger investment than they initially thought it would be. But um, but we may could end up with two or three rope bags maybe for Christmas which will take up a bulk of my time that's available on the board for Christmas orders. So we'll see what happens there. But I cut out a bunch of belts. I've got um, two or three customer belts here that we're gonna do this week. And then I also put in some stock belts. One thing that I used to do occasionally a couple of years ago was just trying to build some inventory, trying to build some stuff that people can just call and like, hey, do you have this made? Yes, it's made and we can ship it. It's not necessarily custom. Um, just little stock items. I've, I've been just trying to work those in as I can, just make a wallet here and there or an extra belt here or there or whatever. But a couple of years ago, I was actually writing a ticket. Like I would design, like write a custom ticket basically for the shop. Uh, if I want to build three belts and then I would design basically on the ticket, hey, I want this one floral, two-tone brown, this one floral, two-tone black, this one basket stamp, whatever. But I would write it on a ticket, put it in our system, and that way it came up just like a normal order. And that seemed to work pretty good because it, it actually gives you something tangible. It's purposeful. It's not just when I get some time. Because usually, especially with me, if I say, well, when I get time, I'll get around to that, basically means I'm not going to do it because I, I just don't ever get that much downtime to, uh, to just come back to that. And I'm not putting it down anywhere. I'm not writing it down anywhere, so I'm going to forget about it. So when it comes to stock items, I wanted to do something that's a little bit more uh, focused and purposeful and so we wrote some tickets and I've got some extra ones over there that I wrote for next week or, or whatever but it's on a ticket it's in our system so I, when it pops up again it'll remind me hey I wanted to make those four wallets you know um, with such and such on them or whatever it might be so you might give that a try if you're trying to build up a little inventory coming into Christmas is actually write it down just like an order however you do that if you do it in, in your phone if you have some kind of spreadsheet, if you're doing handwritten tickets, whatever, if you're gonna build stock items, I'm giving that a try. Like I said, I've done it before and it does work well because it kind of, not a guilt factor, but it, it's on your, it's in your system, it's on your clipboard, whatever. And so you see it over and over again. And if you keep passing over it, you know you're kind of you know, putting it off and putting it off. And so it'll kind of make you kind of find some time to, uh, to end up taking that up and, and actually doing it. And, um, and so I'm going to do that, like I said, this week and, and every week I'm just going to put in, even if it's just one wallet, you know, just something I want to make or, or, uh, maybe a gunsling or, or something like that for the sales floor. I'm just going to write a ticket for it instead of just keeping it in my noggin because things tend to fall out of this thing all the time. So we're going to try that. But I cut out a bunch of parts. I've got a binder over there. I cut out as well for, for a customer. It's just going to be plain with his brand on it. Nothing big. We got a weaver leather order in, so I got some harness leather I've been out of, and so we're gonna cut some tugs for this breast collar that we made. And we cut a bunch of repair parts, like stirrup leathers and saddle strings and things that we need over there, and I'll show you that here in just a second. What I wanted to show you real quick though, um, we do have a video coming out on gluing that seat in. So we had the video on doing the inlaid seat. The video for gluing that seat in is kind of like the next step, so I wanna be sure and get that out because everybody's got a different way of doing it. And I'm gonna show you my process. The video is pretty much done I've just got to get it posted so it'll come out shortly after this video post but in that video I use a bouncer and if you're not familiar with building saddles you may not know what a bouncer is but all it is is it's just a, a usually the best ones are made out of just a porcelain doorknob so you can find these at antique stores you can find them at you know estate auctions um, you know grandpa's old barn whatever you can find these around the trick is be sure that you find one that doesn't have any chips in it. I have seen a couple of these that have chips in them. Um, you just wanna be sure they're smooth and they're in good shape. And they'll have just a metal shaft. You'll see when you, when you find one, usually it's both ends. You'll have to take one end off. And then I just made a leather stack handle. A lot of guys will do a wooden handle, like they'll turn a nice wooden handle and mount that in there. I did this in college, had no idea what I was doing. It was the only thing I've ever done that was a leather stacked handle. So it's not the prettiest thing, but it works well. But what it's used for is for rubbing your seat into the dish. So as you're forming and shaping your seat or gluing your seat in, you can use this to, to go along there and, and work that seat into the dish. And as it comes down to the tree bars, you can get a good shape on there. And with it being porcelain, you're not gonna scratch anything. And so that's really important. Um, I also have one that's brass, but I haven't, 
I haven't made it to where it's a bouncer yet. All it is is a door handle, but my father-in-law gave me one that's brass. And so one, one day I may put that one together and try it and see how it works. I'm not sure if the brass is gonna have any effect on the leather. I wouldn't think it would, but, um, but I know the porcelain ones are really good. So if you ever see one of these, uh, I think everybody should have a bouncer hanging on their bench. Uh, even if you don't build saddles, it just comes in handy sometimes. There's certain applications where you need to form some leather in a weird shape or something. And so with this being rounded like that, you can get into some areas that are just a little bit harder with a flat faced hammer. So, but that's a bouncer. You can also buy these. There's some guys out there that make these and uh, maybe just as easy just to buy one um, and support your local craftsmen that are making some of our tools and stuff like that. So, but bouncers are cool. And uh, it's just gonna be a question on the, on the video when that video comes out, you know, I mentioned it in there some and you'll see me using that that tool, but I just wanted to kind of explain it a little bit here on the Monday video. All right, so let me show you what's going on in the repair area and the saddle area. All right, so we just had this saddle come in. This is one that we built, oh, I think 2017 or 2018, and uh, the guy we built it for, he's wanting to do another saddle or, or find something uh, else if we've got something come in on trade, but he wants to sell this one, so we brought it in the shop. And we're gonna get it all washed. Um, it's been rode pretty good. It's broke in real nice. I think it's gonna clean up really, really well. It's on what our tree maker calls a bull association. I really like this tree. It's got a real nice thick front. It's got a good seat to it. Um, but we're going to go ahead and clean this up. It really doesn't need any repairs necessarily. Just some cleanup and conditioning and then that kind of deal and get it ready to go. And then it will be on the website and we'll try to get it sold. And then here we got these two saddles that we washed this weekend. Um, I was finally able to kind of take a little bit of time, get here early Saturday morning and got these, got these washed. I got them broke down Friday afternoon and uh, we got them washed and let them set until Monday. It's always good that I like to wash saddles either on Friday or Saturday and that way they have you know two days there before we get in the shop Monday afternoon to uh, to kind of dry really well and we got these all conditioned up. I just conditioned them just like we do in our video where we showed you how we clean oil and polish a saddle. That's what we did to these and then I've got my strings cut. Both these saddles had saddle strings so I got that material cut for them and uh, new stirrup leathers as well. We cut, both these saddles are getting stirrup leather, so I got, went ahead and cut those. So we've got those ready to go, and we'll start putting those together today and uh, and get these ready to go so we can get them out. That's about all the real repairs that we really had to do to them, is mainly just cleaning and uh, replacing stirrup leathers. So these two will be ready to go, and then we got two more, well this one, and then one more out on the sales floor that we'll pull in their place and uh, tear them apart and wash these this week and that way they're ready to go by next week and then we'll be done with repairs for a little while, hopefully. Now this is a saddle that we had on the sales floor. It is on the website. Well, it'll probably be off the website by the time this video comes out, but it's been for sale and we had a good customer. He's actually on my saddle list uh, for me to build him a saddle and he ended up needing a saddle uh, kind of quick and so he bought this one and so we're shipping it to Arkansas today or well, tomorrow or the next day but we needed to replace the binder. The young lady that owned this saddle, her name is on the binder. And so most times people will want that replaced so that they're not riding with somebody else's name on their uh, on the binder back here. So we're just gonna, I've got the material cut for that and we got the old one pulled off. And so all I'll do is is uh, tool the new one to match what, what was on there minus her name. And then we'll get that on and dyed so that it doesn't really stand out too much. And then this saddle will be ready to ship. Now, as far as the custom saddle, we did, like I said, we got the seat glued in. So it's glued in from about the dish back or the pocket back, and that's ready to go. So we'll shape up. This one's getting a little one inch Cheyenne roll. And so we'll get that marked up, trimmed, sanded, prepped, ready to go. And then we've also got the binder material for this one. We'll get the binder tooled, put on, and then the saddle will be ready to kind of start oiling and assembling here right quick. Um, and then we've got the stirrups. We finished those this weekend as well. We've got the treads in those. They're nice and dry. So these are ready, ready to be oiled with everything else. We've got the billets already, the flank strap, the uh, fenders and stirrup leathers are done. All the little parts are done. Everything's ready to go once the binder's on for this saddle to get oiled, antiqued, and then begin assembly and tie out, and it'll be ready to go. We do have custom conchos coming for this saddle. So depending on when they get here, would depend on when the saddle gets shipped out. But hopefully it won't be too long. Um, I think they're usually usually pretty quick over there at uh, Campbell's Bits and Spurs. So hopefully within the next week or so, we should have the conchos from them. But this is a fun saddle. This is the one we did the, the swell tooling video on. If you've seen that, that video has done really well. Seems like y'all really like 
watching how we tool on something three-dimensionally like that instead of flat. A lot of people thought that just in their mind they thought this was tooled flat and then put on. This is usually tooled flat with uh, manufacturers, but with the custom setting, we tool them on the saddle so we know exactly where the tooling is going to be and everything fits properly. So that's how we like to do it. One other thing that I worked on last week was, or this weekend I was working on it some, is just a new little border. I was trying to come up with just some kind of little different border using some random stamps that I have over there. And so I'm still fleshing it out, but I think it turned out pretty cool. I've seen a border similar to this that a lot of people do. I was just kind of playing with it, just kind of see what I could come up with that kind of had that same feel. And um, it goes really quick. And so I think it's just kind of, kind of fun to put that on a few things just for the sales floor or whatever. Um, but I might do a little little deal, kind of show you show you how I did that or whatever. But that's a fun deal with stamps. So if you've got a big collection of stamps, and a lot of us do, we buy more stamps than we'll ever use. You end up with a with a tin can over there or a tool roll full of tools that you hardly ever play with, you ever use on any projects. You kind of get the ones that you like. If you have those stamps kind of laying around uh, in the morning first thing, drinking a cup of coffee or whatever in the evening before you go home or you're just kind of jacking around on the weekends and just trying to be creative. Get some of those funky little stamps that you don't ever use anywhere. Throw them on some leather and just try to come up with either either a little border or maybe another little pattern set, something like that, where you can take a, a stamp and do it a geometric pattern where it's a little bit different than what you you know, would have ever tried before. So sometimes it's kind of fun to get those set stamps out and just kind of play with those just to come up with something kind of different. But before I let you go, I want to show you something that a friend of ours now made us. Uh, we met him in Waco for the first time. He's been following us on Instagram. Uh, we've since been following him, but many of y'all may know Austin with a tack line leather. And I put this on our Instagram over the weekend, but he came to the shop on Friday just to visit the shop and kind of come hang out for a little bit. And we had another visitor here, another leather craftsman that was in here hanging out. But Austin made this for me as a gift and it's really cool. I couldn't believe it. He, he had said in the message that he was coming because he wanted to see if we'd be here on Friday. I said, yeah, we'll be there. He said, all right. He said, I'm gonna bring you that beer. I told you I'd bring you whenever we were, when I met you in Waco. And uh, I didn't remember that, but I just thought it was kind of funny. But anyway, he did. He brought me some beer. And uh, don't worry, Austin, this is not the same six pack that you brought me on Friday. I've since drank that. This one I got, uh, had Claudia pick me up a six pack on our way to work this morning, just so that I could put it in the carrier to kind of show what it is. But it's, I think it's really cool. I think he did a great job. I didn't even realize really that this right here is a magnet. So the first one I opened when I got to the house, the uh the lid actually catches on the magnet i drink one now but i gotta drive home but thank you austin i really appreciate the gift and if you aren't following attack line leather on uh, instagram be sure and check him out he does some really neat stuff got a really cool style very unique uh, very clean work check him out follow him along he's got a youtube channel as well and uh, you can have a lot of fun following him as well as many other craftsmen that are out there on instagram and stuff but this is that kind of project that's really cool especially during christmas time we're looking for that project that we can offer to our customers that we can turn out fairly quickly. You don't have a whole lot of construction time. Like we were talking about earlier with the rope bags, it's uh, it's awesome and amazing to get a rope bag order any time of the year, but especially during Christmas time because that's a it's a big project, it's a big ticket item, but it takes a lot of time and a lot of material, and so it can kind of tie up a, a bunch of your work work hours available during Christmas. So sometimes these smaller projects, similar to this, or or something that's just a little faster, a little easier to make, that's really unique that people really like, you can motor through a bunch of those and kind of turn money a little bit quicker, and uh, and also use up some of your scrap. So we're always looking for ways to use our scraps on projects projects and stuff like that, especially us. Speaking of that, we've got a ton of scraps right now, a ton of pieces, big chunks that I've got to go through and cut because we cut up all those belt blanks. Plus we've got some leftover from what we cut when we went to Waco. So I'm about to get back at it. I'm gonna get in the shop, try to figure out some new projects, some new little patterns we can cut out, and some new dies we can have made. So we've got plenty of projects coming into Christmas. So I appreciate y'all watching and we'll see y'all next week in the Monday morning briefing.